Cheers. Cheers. And welcome to the Horticulturalists. I'm Stephen Ryan. I'm Matthew Lucas and this is Barnaby. Yes, he's come to join us today. Now, much as I love having a glass of Pinot on the balcony at 10 in the morning, Stephen, <laughs> is there something you need to share? <laughs> well, it's not my alcoholicness. <laughs> what I wanted to share today is our story, which is all about plants in the same family. As the grape. The grape, Aha. yes. Now, I also noticed that we're wreathed in Virginia creeper. Yes, we are, and in fact- Is there it, a reason for that? It's one of the grape family. So that's the start of what we're going to talk about today is the whole gamut of this family, which not only produces a fantastic Pinot Noir or perhaps a Sauvignon Blanc, yes. but uh, also creates all sorts of ornamental value in the garden. So that's the topic today. Okay, which I didn't know, and I did not know that this was part of the same family. All yeah. right, well look, if we can possibly stand up after drinking all this wine, we should go and investigate. Why don't we indeed? <laughs> Now, we do post every week, so if you want to follow our continuing horticultural adventures, you must hit subscribe. Well, you don't must, but you could hit subscribe. <laughs> We'd like you to. <laughs> and the notification bell, and you'll keep up with what we're doing every week. Ta-da! Uh, yes, Virginia creeper. Yes. Now, it's probably, from our perspective, quite a common plant. I was going to say, Stephen, yeah. a common plant. <laughs> a common plant. That you could get at a hardware store. Of course you could. And Virginia creeper, yes, it's almost ubiquitous. You see it yep. growing everywhere in North America, of course, where it comes from. Yes. And it's used a lot in England. It's used quite a lot here in Australia. But it does a job. And the job I love it for is the fact that it dangles and I can grow it through other plants. This is actually in a maple. It is. Now, that's the interesting thing for me is how I see it. And you've got it in, in similar-ish conditions throughout your garden mm. and it's not growing up walls or sheds or the house. Which Far you don't it. find in nature. None of those things show up in nature. So where does it grow in nature? Up other plants. Oh. So that's what climbers do. There's no sheds, there's no fences, there's no walls, there's no pergolas in nature. Mm everything grows up something else. Now, a lot of climbers will eventually swamp their host, but Virginia creeper with its lovely dangly habit is very elegant. I can prune it back a little bit in the winter if it's becoming really big, but it's less likely to swamp its host than most things. So yeah. this is growing up through a big old maple. It colors before the maple does, so I get double whammy. So I get the ah. autumn color of the Virginia creeper because it's one of the heralds of autumn. It, colours Ta -da! first. The Herald of Autumn. Yeah, and then later on the maple will turn and go red, so I get two sets of autumn colour in the one spot. And the thing I love about Virginia Creeper, this is in semi-shade, so it's sort of in rather beautiful orangey tones. Well, this is the thing, because I assumed that it's something you could only plant in full sun. No. But if you plant it in full sun, what happens is the foliage in the autumn will go a brilliant scarlet, which yeah. is very engaging. I, yes. I'm very happy when it does that. But in the semi-shade, it will go into shades of orange, which is still very satisfying. Yeah. And in fairly heavy shade, it will tend to go soft yellows. Mm. So the autumn colour is dependent on how much light it gets during the growing season. So what colour you get will be dependent on where you plant it. Interesting. Now... Obviously, the hardiness is not an issue, as it's a North American plant. So it it won't grow in the tropics, though. No, well, so yeah. that kind of hardiness, I guess, yeah. is an issue. Mm. But for us here, it's more about water. So how does it go in a drier, more Mediterranean climate? It's surprisingly tough. Because um, you see it in Italy. You see mm. it dangling from... And in Spain, I lived in Spain mm. for years. People have it dangling off their balconies. Yeah, exactly. So it's it will grow very well in any Mediterranean climate. It will also grow very well in temperate to cold climates. Yeah. So it's a very adaptable plant. And I think elegant beyond belief. It's just the most beautiful thing. It is. I love the dangle. It is mm. so beautiful. Most climbers spend their time rolling themselves into an unstuffed mattress sitting on the top of pergolas and things. Mm. Virginia creeper doesn't do that. It'll run along something and then it will just sort of get these lovely dangly bits that hang down. It is pure elegance. So it's a great climber. And does its relative Boston Ivy do the same thing? Ah, now Boston Ivy will also dangle, but it's a much, <laughs> it's a much more... Um, a uh, useful climber on flat surfaces uh, where it can grow up a wall. Okay, so. well, do you have Boston Ivy? I have Boston Ivy as well, and I do use it as a wall cover. In fact, it's very good as a passive solar thing, okay. which we need to look at. Let's go and have a look. I need yeah. to know about passive solar and Boston Ivy. Let's go. Lead on. 
And this one yes. is another of the same genus uh, to which the Virginia creeper belongs. Yes. So we didn't mention the botanic name before, so I'm terribly sorry. Bad Parthenocissus, Parthenovirgin vine, Virginia creeper. Oh, oh. yes. Yeah, so, okay. Yeah, so it's, it's actual, literal. It's a literal translation of the vernacular name for Virginia creeper, which is really interesting. And the thing I have never understood is the difference between them. And I've realised here's leaf A. I'm going to go and get leaf B so we can compare and contrast. Wait one second. We'll be back. <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> so you're back. I'm back. All right. So the difference is quite obvious when you put them together. Virginia creeper. It is Parthenocissus. Uh, quinquifolius, meaning yep. five, so it has five leaflets. Ah, oh, right, quin, right, 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 yep, right. Yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. And tricuspidata, which means tri, as in three, has three lobes. So there you oh go. Oh my goodness! So that's the difference between the two. There so, you go. And is that the uh, now? If these two were to meet in blissful union one dark <laughs> winter's night, I don't think it's happened yet. But it will could. they combine? Can they? They could, but. The combinations could be different. I mean, if you have three children, they can come from the same parent, but each child will be quite different. So the hybrid between the two, if such a thing exists or did exist, mm. could have characteristics closer to one parent or closer to the other. Who knows? And would it be worth the effort? I was going to say, why would you bother? Because <laughs> yeah. they're very different now. So we've looked at Virginia creeper, yeah. Boston ivy. So any differences to its yeah. cousin? Yes, there are a couple of differences. It's much more tenaciously self-clinging. Right. So it will, it's better to use up walls, etc. As you have done. And it, in fact, the way its leaves sit, they almost look like green tiles sitting one above the other. It does. And it's a fantastic thing to cover walls. It's passive solar in the fact that its foliage is on it during the summer months. So, of course, if you've got hot sun on a, on, on a hot wall, mm. uh, it will keep the heat off the wall. In the winter, it sheds its leaves and lets the light in and it dries up the wall. Now... There's a couple of things we need to discuss about this. People get very nervous about planting climbers on walls. And clinging ones. And, and this whole notion it's going to pull out the mortar oh. and destroy your house and everything. Rubbish, goes rubbish, 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 rubbish. <laughs> now, the things shoot you need... Shoot that down. Yeah, shoot that down. The things you've got to remember with uh, Boston Ivy for growing it up a wall. Its suction cups just stick to the wall. Yeah. If you leave it alone, it does absolutely no harm. Mm. If you pull it off the wall, what's more likely to happen is it just leaves the suction cups behind, which can be aesthetically not that pleasing, mm. especially if you need to do some paint work. But unless your mortar is a lime mortar, which generally goes back to before the Second World War, if you pull it off a lime mortar, you'll sometimes pull bits of mortar out, but you're not actually going to do any harm to the structure of the building. Mm. So it's perfectly safe to grow it on buildings. It can be a bit of a nuisance growing over your windows or up into your fascia boards or into the spouting or whatever mm. so you need to manage it but remember all climbers are like puppies they're not just for Christmas so you have to manage them. Now I've noticed that Virginia creeper is the herald of autumn and it is mm. well into its um, foliage change. Yeah. Boston ivy Later. So. Yeah. Yes, it will start to colour about three, maybe four weeks after the Virginia creeper colours. Yeah. And so it will, on a sunny wall, it will also go bright scarlet. On a shadier wall, it will go into the orange and yellow tones. Mm. So it can grow in both, but to get the best autumn colour, it's better in full sun. Yeah. And I might add, it also dangles, and we'll show you a little bit of dangly stuff up there. So it can dangle off things and look very elegant as well. But Virginia creeper is probably better for that. So this mm. comes to the different, why would you choose one versus the other? Yeah. Well, the Virginia creeper more for its dangly free form growth habit. Yeah. The Boston ivy for its much neater, tighter form, which is fabulous on a wall, particularly if you need access down the wall. So if you've got a path quite close to a wall, you don't want something that's going to whack you in the face as you walk past. Yeah. So the Boston ivy is ideal where space is limited because it really only quite literally grows the length of the leaf mm. out off the wall. And so as they're so similar, same kind of basic conditions in terms of water and obviously recovered sun. Yes, yes. In fact, they're both very cold hardy. Mm. Uh, in fact, and non tropical loving. And non tropical loving. Boston ivy, of course, was uh, the plant that was grown all, all over the universities in America, and that's where the term Ivy League comes from. So it's not about ivy as we would know it, as in English ivy. It's about Boston ivy, which is, of course, absolutely no relative mm. to English ivy. And that's probably where some people's fear comes up in that. They assume it's ivy like ivy, and uh, the European evergreen ivies are quite a different beast. Right. So these are quite safe to grow. They're 
cold hardy, they're drought tolerant. And heat tolerant. And heat yeah, tolerant. They can take 40 degree plus, which yep. is over 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah, so they will grow in a very wide range of non tropical climates with a plum. They're just so easy. All right. Well, we've covered the basics, the more common ones. Should we look at something a little more esoteric oh, yes. from the group? Yes, we need to. We've got some other grapes that are definitely worth looking at. All right, let's go. Now, what exotic grape is before us here, Stephen? Well, oh. this is one of the Ampelopsis, uh, which is another grapevine group. And in fact, Ampelopsis means like a grapevine. And in fact, they're related. Now, Ampelopsis, there is one commonly grown species in North America specifically. And is that called the porcelain vine? Because yes. Because that is what, can I pull one of these off? <gasps> oh, oh, sorry. Yeah. Look at that. <gasps> Aren't they stunning? So the common one uh, goes under the wonderful name of Ampelopsis breva pedunculares glandulosa. Oh and it is in fact New weedy in some parts of North America. Mm. So it, it has uh, its weedy potential. So keep that in mind. In certain areas, these might be a problem. Mm. Certainly it hasn't been an issue for me. This one isn't the same species though. This one is Ampelopsis humulifolia, which means leaves like a hop. So the... Oh. The commercial hop that one brews beer from yes. has a leaf that is quite similar to this one. It comes from China, yeah. and I would still call it a porcelain vine. Most people wouldn't tell the difference between this one and the more common but very long named one. So they're very, very closely related. And I just think it is one of the most beautiful aut autumnal berries that you could possibly get. It is. Now let's talk about the flowers. Are they anything or is it all no. about the berries? No, any, pretty well everything in the grapevine family has tiny little green flowers. Mm. Some of them have a slight scent, but they're of no visual impact whatsoever. Mm. Uh, it's all about either autumn color or berries or in some cases, both. And this one is the autumn foliage something, or is it? Yellow. Nothing. Yeah, so it's just starting to turn yellow now. Yes. In fact, if I pluck a leaf out, you can see there's one there that's rather manky looking, but it is in <laughs> fact- a charming leaf sample. Yeah, so there you go. That's the sort of autumnal color you'll get with this. So it goes yellow. It'll start to do that shortly. So you'll have a combination of yellow leaves and blue, purple, Turquoise. and violet oh, berries. Goodness, that's so, so beautiful. Now, where would you be great? Obviously, you have got it up a an obelisk. Yes, tripody thing. A tripody thing. Yeah. Where else? I mean, where would it ideally be grown? Well, I like using it this way because I trim it back every winter back to a uh, basic structure of branches that is permanent. Yeah. Uh, and then it just flops itself out and does exactly this. Mm. But you could grow it over a pergola. You could grow it along a fence. I mean, you could use it in almost any way you would use a classical climber. It's vigorous. It climbs by way of tendrils. I was going to ask, it doesn't look like it's a self-clinger. No, it's, it's not a self-clinger like the Boston Ivy or the Virginia Creeper, but uh, it holds on by tendrils, so it mm. needs something sort of finish to grab hold to of to move. Like a grapevine. Exactly like a grapevine. Strange so there you go. Enough. So Ampelopsis humulifolius, which I think is one of my favorite burying plants. Oh. And I, I think just next to it is another species, is there not? There is, let's go and have a look at that as well. Let's go. <laughs> Now we have another species of Ampelopsis. It's yes. got a number around the world. Yep. And this one's one that is almost unheard of. Very few people have it. Almost unheard of. Yeah. Why well, uh, is in your garden, Stephen Ryan? Well, because I managed to get a piece of it many, many years ago from one of the botanic gardens and it's the only place I'd ever seen it growing. So uh -huh. there you go. And do you cultivate it then? I've started to cultivate it. Uh, it's an Ampelopsis called Ampelopsis aconitifolia. And you, of course, have already guessed. No, aconotifolia. Yeah. No. No, I thought not. Folia means leaf. Yeah, and it's the same with humulifolius. This is the aconitum foliaged ampelopsis, and aconitum is monkshood, which is a delphinium relative. Yes, oh, I know yeah. now. Ah. Which is deadly poisonous, and everybody gets a bit thingy about it, but you do have to eat it first. So this does have a leaf very like an it aconitum. It does, now that yeah. you have mentioned it. Yeah. Now, this one I grow mainly for its foliage. Mm. Its leaves are really pretty and sort of crested and, and cut and beautiful right through the summer. Yep. It goes a bright yellow before it sheds in the autumn, and it's just starting to go yellow now. Mm. It does produce berries, but it needs quite a long growing season. And 
this year we've had a La Nina, so we've had a coolish summer. Mm. So this form hasn't produced any berries this year. And are they as spectacular as its cousin? Nope, <laughs> it's not. Uh, its fruit tends to start green and then go into shades of yellow and then almost caramelly coloured. Okay. Uh, they're pleasant, but they're not showy. So it's more about the leaf. It is you. definitely about the leaf. And I grow this in the same way. I've got it on a, on a metal uh, frame. I cut it back to the frame each winter, and then it just gently flops out during the summer months and gives me a wonderful foliage plant right through that period. And it's a twiner rather yeah. than a clinger. Yes, again. So yes. you would grow it maybe up a, in a similar position as a feature vertical in yeah. a bed or could a yeah it could be like this it could grow very well up a veranda post and be kept reasonably contained i mean it can get quite large if you let it go mm. but it's a very manageable climber so for small areas it can be ideal now like its beautiful porcelain buried cousin do they have similar requirements in terms of lights heat water yes they they're all heat tolerant they're all uh, reasonably drought tolerant. Full sun? Full sun's probably better. Uh, certainly the berry crops are far better if they get lots of sort of summer ripening sun. From both types? Both types. Yeah. In fact, this one needs even more sun because yes. that's why this one hasn't fruited at all this year, mm. whereas the other one still managed to throw a stunning crop. Well, I have loved these. Now, is there any more for us to see? Oh, yes, there's lots more in the grapevine family, so let's oh, go and have a look. We should charge our glasses and yeah. go and have a look. I think we shall. <laughs> Now, we are up at the nursery, yes. as they say, still pursuing the grapes of Roth. What do I have in my hand? Well, you have the third of the trifecta of Parthenocissus that I grow. Yes. So we've talked about Virginia creeper, we've talked about the Boston ivy. Mm. This third one comes from China, mm -hmm. and it's Parthenocissus henriana, and it's commonly known for obvious reasons as the silver vein creeper. And I'm just going to come in and show you those beautiful veined leaves. Aren't they amazing? This is the one that is growing over all up there above us in uh, above my office. Now, there are a couple of things about this climate that you need to know that are interesting. It does the same things that all the other parthenocissuses do. So yeah. grow in sun, it will cope with drought, it copes with cold, all those things. But it's the only one of its type that will grow in the shade and still go scarlet in the autumn. Ah. So it will go red in the shade where the others won't. And the other thing of interest, the silver veins mm -hmm. are only in evidence when it's in permanent shade. If you have it growing in the sun, its leaves will go green. Uh, they'll still go red in the autumn, but you won't have that silvery vein. So this is the climber of choice, I would have said, to grow on a semi-shaded to shaded fence where you want something that will grow up to the top and then dangle nicely down. So you've got that lovely sort of dangly look. And then to get that amazing red foliage with the white vein running down the center of each leaflet in the autumn. So the silver vein creeper or Parthenocissus henriana is, I think, a must have. It is stunning. And a great suggestion for shady, less bright areas to have amazing yeah. color. Now, I did notice in your hand, Stephen, uh -huh. I'll go down and pick yeah, up. I that. just can't help myself. What diseased stick do yeah. you have in your hand? This, in fact, is a variegated version of one of the Ampelopsis, so the porcelain vines. Ah, right, right, right. So this one's growing up at the nursery. I don't have it in the garden at home yet. <laughs> um, and it gets the lovely blue uh, turquoise purple berries. So the same vigorous berryness mm. as the other uh, one? It can be quite floriferous and also uh, fruitful. Its biggest claim to fame, of course, is its bizarre mottled variegated foliage. So have a look at that. Now, in the spring when its leaves first come out, the variegation has a pinkish stain to it, yeah. and all the new tendrils are bright pink as well. Oh, okay. So, I can see traces of that. Yeah, there's a little bit of pink still in the stem, as you can yeah. see there. And it's much, much less vigorous growing than the green forms. So again, if you wanted something to grow up a post of a veranda, mm. or on a tripod, or almost anywhere where you're a little bit limited for space, mm. then this variegated one could be worth looking for, and it revels under the name of Ampelopsis. Variegata? No. No. <laughs> miles ahead of me and it's wrong. Okay. Um, Ampelopsis brevipedunculares glandulosa elegans. 
Oh, so, my goodness. So they thought it was elegant when they discovered it, uh, unlike you might think it's not. But there you go. Well, so that's the variegated actually, one. Actually, when you get in close, the leaves really are extraordinary. It is. It's almost like some sort of modern art painting, perhaps. It is. Yes, so there you go. So Ampelopsis, Brevipedunculares, Glandulosa elegans, uh, or the variegated porcelain vine, for those of you who don't want to go through all that. All right, it seems logical that we finish our story about grapes with the true grapes. Yes. But again, the ornamental versions, not necessarily the Shiraz or Pinot Noirs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, the one that we've got just here, just turning into its wonderful, oh. brilliant scarlet colour. And can I just say too, the contrast between this very limey green and the, and the yeah. clarity bronze is amazing. Yeah. Well, this one is the one that in Australia is just generally sold as ornamental grape. Yeah. When you see a botanical name on it, it always just says Vitus vinifera, yep. which is in fact the catch-all for all grapes, including the edible ones. Oh, okay. And they very rarely, if ever, mention a cultivar name. Now, I have done a bit of research, and I think that this variety, although you'll never see it listed as that in Australia, yes. is an old French selection. It's completely sterile. It doesn't produce any grapes, mm. but called Gansan Glory. Gansan Glory? Yeah, so Vitus vinifera Gansan Glory, and it is the classical ornamental grape that's used in all sorts of gardens around Australia to grow on pergolas, on fences, what have you. And it has fabulous autumn foliage and no grapes. And no grapes. And it has the same growing habits, the same um, twirling tendency as the grape of commerce. Yes, and you can prune it and treat it in basically the same way as well. Yeah. So if you feel the need to restrain it or manage it in some way or another, you can prune it back to its old woody framework and just allow it to keep coming out because every year. One, and we'll show the views. This is a single vine that is growing through two trees and over a building. So yes, yes, yes. It's quite I've let it, I've, I've let it go let a wee it go. bit. Yeah, I have to say. I also love the way that it is growing through trees because yeah. it, um, it breaks up the foliage of the tree and it looks... I don't know, it just look, it looks beautiful. Of you? course it does, of course it does. Now, what else and, have you got here? All right, well, I've got two other varieties of the true vitises, so yes. the, the, the grapes. This particular one, with its dark burgundy foliage, yep. is rather appropriately called Vitus vinifera purpurea. Mm -hmm. And it does get clusters of rather bitter black grapes on it, <laughs> so it's not sterile. You could probably use it for a grape jelly, I reckon it would be good for that. Yep. And it comes out in the spring grey-green, by midsummer, it's already going quite burgundy, mm. and it just gets darker and darker until it's almost black by the time it sheds its leaves in the autumn. So interesting to bear in mind then, where you're planting it is just that, that possibility of contrast as you've got here with the mm. greens and the burgundies. Yeah, and the good thing about this particular cultivar, for those who are somewhat space limited, it's not as vigorous and rampant as your average grapevine, so it is actually quite a good one to use in restrained spaces. So you might grow it over a rose arch or up a pillar, Yep. or what have you, and you can control it quite easily. Yes. So that's Vitus vinifera purpurea. Okay. And we'll finish off with the big one. This here is, this huge leaf is Vitus coignetii, the Chinese glory vine. Oh my goodness. So this one you only see as one clone in Australia, so I've never seen it set fruit. Does it need a boy and a girl then? No, actually it doesn't. What it needs is actually a cross-pollinator. So they're both uh, intact flowers, but they need to pollinate a different clone. So if you've got two clones of that vitus, then you can end up with berries. So it's vegetatively propagated. It gets enormous rugose or heavily veined leaves. That's what rugose means. And in the autumn, unlike the classical ornamental grape above our head, this one will go every color from yellow through apricot to orange to scarlet to burgundy, uh, depending on how much light the different parts of the plant are getting. And it doesn't all turn at once. So you've got this remarkable sort of diversity wow. of leaf color. The size of the leaves, that would be something mm. to behold. Yeah. Now, the other ones, the ones we've just spoken of, are uh, like an ordinary grapevine, tough, hardy, sun. Um, they're perfectly fine with drought. They'll cope with the cold. This one will cope with the heat and it will cope with the cold, but it does need more water than your average grapevine coming yeah. from China as it does. Well, I hope that met your grape expectations. Oh, the grapes are rough, Stephen. <laughs> the grapes are rough. Well, I hope you enjoyed that too. I had no idea that the family was so varied. It is. It's a remarkable family. And I had no idea that the Virginia creeper was related to the grapes of Roth. Yeah, exactly. So there you go. There's something to be learned every day. And there is one of these types of plants for everyone because really you can use 
the variety of these plants just about anywhere, unless you're in the tropics, of course. But then. Mm. There are so many amazing tropical vines, so yes, we yes, you've got tears. Yeah, yes, well, I wouldn't shed tears. They can grow things I would love to grow. Indeed, so there you indeed. Go. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this episode as we have. We do post every week, so hit subscribe if you want to know more. And Stephen, we look forward to seeing each other next week. Yeah. What could we do that I, doesn't involve drinking ourselves into a stupor? I don't know, but uh, I'm quite enjoying this particular episode. But we'll be back <laughs> next week with something else. There you go. So until then, cheers. Take care. See you next week. <laughs>